Ruffio! Hi, Bluff. I got a little proposition, addition, addition, uh, just between us dogs, Kadish. I had a bit of a thing, Marooney, while making a deal with... Hey! Off the carpet with those hooks! I just got that cleaned! Anyway, bit of a snagola, and I was left holding the bag, capiche? Huh? Ruffy, pay attention. I'm talking here. I need you to animal sit. Just for a few days. They're small, fluffy. You'll love them. Oh, are they bunnies? Yeah, they're practically bunnies. Hey, watch where you're stampeding! Uh, are you sure they're fluffy? Oh, they're fluffy, all right. Anyway, I'm gonna round them up, bing, bang, boom, I'll pick them up from your place in a week. Uh, wait a minute. Hey, what can I say I owe you one? Hey, just don't try to collect this week. <laughs> or month. <laughs> hey, house rule, no scraping your horns on a kitchen cabinet. It takes off the paint. Yeah, I'm talking to you, pal. What? Hello? I really hope they're bunnies. Life was missing its mystique. My squeaky toys had lost their squeak. And then, out of the blue, I saw the phone, and bam! My destiny was calling me. Pitched my vision for a show. They loved it, thought I was a pro. They got my contract back to find. To their alarm, a dog had signed. Oh, I like that name. I didn't wait to renovate. Found six contestants, all were great. And now I'm on the road to fame. I've got a game show and its name is... It's very catchy. It rolls off the tongue. I don't like vacuums, but we're gonna need them. Here come the contestants now. She once caught a mouse and named it Freddy. It's Emmy. He likes movies with lots of special effects. It's Marco! For Halloween, he dressed up as a cool dude. Cool. It's Mark! One of her bad habits is shredding paper. It's Ruby! She doesn't like people stepping on anthills. Hero to the ants, it's Shreya! He wishes he was Electro Man. Leading the pack in first place, it's Jay! Hello, and welcome to Fetch, the reality game show that asks that age-old question. Does anyone have a zoo or an island? Anyone? No. I, I don't want to get my pocket. I'm kind of looking for some kind of spacious terrain enclosed in which to house several... Animals. Okay, of... wait, what is this about, Ruff? Uh, let me try to explain here. My cousin Bluff is sending some animals over to live with me for a few days. I clearly heard rabbit. Problem is, I also heard the words uh, hooves and uh, horns and sharp teeth, which last time I checked are not really characteristics of rabbits. So I'm not going to panic, though, because I have an idea. Or in other what? words, I have challenge number one. Woo! Make whatever animals are coming over here disappear. Ruby, you'll be meeting two of the greatest disappearing experts ever. Pen and Teller, the world's famous magicians. And that means you are going to Las Vegas. Oh, yes. Yes. yes! Your performance attire is on the wall to your left, and your plane tickets and all your instructions are in the mailbox, so go! Very nice, nice attire. Snazzy. Have fun! What's that, Blossom? You don't think I can make a lot of animals disappear? Well, that attitude isn't very helpful. What, do you have a better idea? What? Send them to Florida? Or is there some kind of retirement home for animals down there? Oh, wait! Disney's Animal Kingdom, of course! My friend Dr. Mark is a veterinarian there. He can explain how to take care of any kind of animal. Marco, Shreya, we have challenge number two! Yeah! Blossom here is putting your plane tickets and everything you need to know in that mailbox right now, so go fetch! Yay! Good luck, guys. Have fun! Bye, guys! Bye, Bye guys! Bye. Bye. As determined by the Fetch 3000, Jay, Mark, and Emmy have stayed behind in the studio today, yeah. but Ooh. they are very excited because they'll be eligible to win points during the halftime quiz show. Oh, man, with the Fetch Fairness Guarantee? That's right, Mark. It is as fair as a country fair in merry old England. All the contestants will have competed for the same number of points by the grand finale. So, for the three kids out of the challenges today, up to 100 points are at stake in the triumph tally. Yeah. Oh, wait, I need to call the magicians. Check, dial the number. Okay, that's a cow. <laughs> Try again, check. 
There they are. Hey, guys. Hi, Ralph. How you doing? Uh, this is Teller. I'm Penn. What's up? Listen, I I'm sure you're familiar with my show, Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Yeah, it's, it's the show with the cat. Yeah, we love that show. Wonderful. Anyway, uh, can you teach my Fetcher Ruby how to make something disappear? Sure. Send Ruby to uh, Las Vegas, and we'll give her the 411. Awesome. Thank you, gentlemen, for the 411. Thank you, Ruff. Always a pleasure. Say hi to the cat for us. Um, sure. Blossom, Penn and Teller, say hi. Here she comes. Welcome to Las Vegas. Thank Welcome you. to the Penn and Teller Theater. We Thank are you. Penn and Teller. Ruff told us about your problem here. Yes. You want to know about vanishing stuff? Yeah. Yeah, big time. Hold that in your hand. Now watch carefully uh, until it puts it into the cone. And now, a little magic, magic gesture, which he could have done better than that. But there we go. And sprinkles. The red handkerchief is gone. It's gone. Vanished. So it wouldn't make the animal completely disappear, but it would turn the animal into sprinkles. Sprinkles? That can't be right. There are no secrets to magic. None. Nothing really vanishes. Nothing really goes away. You can't get rid of anything. Really? But you can make it look like things vanish. Can you do that with a rhinoceros? Uh, here's a table. Nothing tricky about the table. Do, do, you have, do you have a camera? Yeah, Ruby. Why don't you use your little video camera and record this? Whoa! Oof! Then we can see what's doing. You can shoot this anywhere you want. You can try to catch us as much as you want in anything because there is no magic going on. We are just lying to you. Lying, usually not a good thing, but in magic, it just means pretending. We take the first ball, place it in our hand, vanish it, and it appears underneath the cup. Wait. You with us so far? No. We take the second ball, place it in our hand, vanish it, and it appears underneath the second cup. I take the third ball, Place it in his hand. Now watch. Shows you underneath the cup, yet it still appears underneath the cup. Well, you're following all this? You're getting as close as you want. Now watch this. Take the center ball, place it visibly underneath the center cup. Take the two side balls, put them anywhere we want because they always reappear underneath the center cup. Now see this? A little bit of juggling over here. Okay. And then bang. I, uh, wow. Giant ball they do in the that? center cup. One more giant ball under either side. And of course, for the finish, it's a baseball right there. Okay, that was awesome. We'll now do a Penn and Teller version. Wait, that was not the Penn and Teller version? With clear plastic cups. Now you can see through the cups. Watch carefully. Take the first ball, pretend to place it in our hand, having already snuck it underneath the first cup. Take the second ball, simultaneously secrete it beneath the cup, pretend to place it in our hand, and show it. Take the third and final ball, pretend to place it in our hand, pretend to show it at the cup, pretend to place it in the cup, and then secretly secrete it and reveal it. Now we're all set for the second half, three cups all loaded, three balls on top. Take the center ball, place the center cup. Each of the side balls really put them away. We don't need them anymore. We have three duplicates in the center cup. But these three balls that come over here, this is not juggling. This is called misdirection. Well, I look over here, tell us the final ball under, one more on either side, and of course, for the finish, it's our friend, the American Baseball. Okay, these guys are the most awesome magicians in the world. The, the most important part of the uh, cups and balls is a thing called the French drop. I'm familiar with French toast. He's got the ball there, now it's over there, except that it's really... Still in that. Right here, exactly. Put okay. that in your left hand right there, okay? And really grab it, okay? Okay, now this time, do it with nothing in your hand. Okay. Okay, just act it. Now, put it in your hand. Okay. But instead of taking it in this hand, you're just going to drop it down into there. Teller is not very chatty, I am noticing. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Do it again. Okay. Vanish it. Oh, it's go. gone. That's all you did. But it's still there. Still you can here. never really get rid of it. Oh, great. Well, let's see how things are going over at the Animal Kingdom. I'll give Dr. Mark a call. Dr. Mark? Hey, Ruff. Listen, Doc, you know a lot about taking care of animals, all kinds of animals. Can I send a couple of my fetchers down there to see what it takes to be an animal caretaker? Would love that. That'd be great. The instructions told Marco and Shreya to look for Matt. Hope they can find him. Are you Matt? Yeah. Oh, that was easy. So you guys want to go on a quick safari ride? Yeah. yeah great, let's do. go. <laughs> We have over 7,000 animals here. That includes over 150 different species of birds, over 80 different species of mammals. Uh, we've got some invertebrates. What are some of the things that you think that uh, these animals need? Food. They need food. Food, that's exactly Water. Food, water, exactly Shelter. right. Shelter. Shelter. 
Uh, habitat? Habitat, exactly right. Whoa. So animals need food, water, shelter, and space. All right. That, that was, was really, really cool. cool. Hold on a sec. I'm getting a call from Dr. Mark. He's our head vet. Here, let me put it on speakerphone for you. Hey, man. Hey, Dr. Mark, what's going on? Listen, wanted to remind you that we've got that exam. Wait, what was that? Uh -huh. She's already had her breakfast with the primate biscuits and produce. Did you guys see? We've got an animal scheduled for a checkup, but I didn't catch the name. Did you guys no. catch the name? No. Make sure they bring a fecal sample. It's usually about 20 grams. Could you what, repeat what kind of animal was it? She's going to get the enrichment items, that bucket and such. Oh, oh. Do Dr. Dr. Mark, Mark. Oh, interference there. Oh, well, I didn't catch that. Did you guys catch no. it? No, I didn't catch the animal. So even though we don't know the name of the animal, what are a couple things that might give us some clues as to what type yeah. of animal it is? You said you have thousands of animals here. How are you going to narrow it down? What did it receive for its breakfast this morning? Primate biscuits and fruits. Fruit. Okay, so yeah. we know that. And what's we need to collect uh, one other thing, fecal a fecal sample, and there's something and, else um, that the animal enrichment. Can, yeah, that, that's something that the animal will receive after it received its checkup. I know you're going to need to talk to somebody about uh, what these animals eat. So what I want you to do is, is go talk to Debbie at the Animal Nutrition Center. All right, okay. Thank you. Welcome to the Animal Nutrition Center. This is where we prepare the diets for all the animals. Well, we have a mystery animal, and all we know about it is that it eats primate biscuits and produce, produce for breakfast. We have a number of different primates. We have apes and we have monkeys. Basically, the difference is that monkeys typically have a tail and apes do not. We've got colobus monkeys, gorillas, lemurs, cotton top tamarinds, mandrels, siamangs, and gibbons. That's quite a list, but each of those animals would have produce in their diets, as well as the primate biscuits. Okay, so we've narrowed it down from thousands of animals to seven. That should help. How do we narrow this list down even more? Didn't Dr. Mark say something about poop? Make sure they bring a fecal sample. It's usually about 20 grams. Oh, poop? You need to go visit Dr. Christie in the Wildlife Tracking Center. From food to poop. Well, that's logical. Hey, are you Dr. Christie? I am Dr. Christie. I'm a scientist here at Disney's Animal Kingdom. How can I help you guys? We have to find out a mystery animal. She has 20 gram poop. Well, scientists can use poop to find out lots of different things. Mm. Um, so one of the things we can tell from poop is how big the animal is that made it. And I happen to have some poop over here that we can look at. It's covered in shellac, so that's why it's okay for us to hold it and pick it up. I have a little game for you guys. It's called Hello. Match the Feces with the Species. Uh, viewers at home, please do not try to play the home version of Match the Feces with the Species. Yeah, the poop the fetchers are using has a clear protective coating, and these are trained professionals. Each of these poop samples here goes with one of these animals. So this is an elephant, a mandrel, a hippo. This is a Key Largo wood rat. That's a giraffe, a cotton top tamarind, and a zebra. So see if you can match them up. All right, cool. I think this is definitely the smallest, so that goes to the wood rat, would you say? Yeah, I guess so. This elephant. Elephant. This might be hippo. OK. This one looks the most like human poop. Uh-huh. We're both primates, so. Yep. I think this one will go to the mandrel. Yep. Let's see, we have these three animals left. And this let's go for the from smallest, smaller. so. Now, this, this one. one, and then. So for the zebra. It's actually flip flops. Uh. Yep, so the giraffes make really big piles of these, um, but they're really small and compact because a lot of their food is absorbed and used right away, so you don't see a lot of it in their poop like you see in the zebra's poop. So you guys were great, though. You got almost all of them right. So what was that question that you needed help with? What animal poops 20 grams? And do you have it narrowed down to any animals? Yeah. Those are all primates, right? Yeah. Right. So the gorilla's poop is really big. Um, it can weigh over 100 grams. So I think so you could rule that one out. Um, and the cotton top tamarind poop, you can see here, each of these little poops weighs about half a gram. So that's going to be way too small for you. Um, 20 grams could be a weight for any of those other animals' poop, though. We're down to five possible primates. And now it's time to move from poop the points. That's right, it's the Halftime Quiz Show. So let's brush up on the rules. 50 points are available. You have 60 seconds to answer as many questions as you can. 10 questions available at five points apiece. You guys ready? We're up. <laughs> Let the quiz begin. True or false, an animal's habitat must provide for its needs, including food, water, shelter, and space. True. 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 Yes. How many animals are there in Disney's Animal Kingdom? A, 70. B, 700. C, 7,000. 700. No. True or false, a good magician can make matter disappear. Uh, false. Correct. The mystery animal that Shreya and Marco must identify ate what for breakfast? Um, uh, uh, primates, primates, primates and, and fruits. Yes. Name one different.
difference between monkeys and apes? Um, uh, monkeys usually have tails, apes usually don't. That's right. Which magician doesn't talk, pen or teller? Teller. Teller. Correct. Name one thing you can tell about an animal from its poop. How big it is. That's true. When you pretend to move something from one hand to the other hand, it's called what? A, the German drop, B, the French drop, C, the Italian drop. B. French B. drop. B. B. French drop it is. Ah, which animal to match the feces with the species game had the smallest poop? The, the rat. The rat. Uh, the rat. What kind of rat? I don't know. Uh, oh. It was a rat, Ruff. It was a rat. Just take the rat. Okay, fine. It was a Key Largo wood rat. I'll give it to you. Vaughn, we are out of time. Eight out of ten, 40 points. Good score. Oh, yeah, I did. Let's go over the one you missed. How many animals are there in Disney's Animal Kingdom? You said 700. The answer is 7,000. You got yourselves 40 points. That's a good score. Hey, Ruffio. Hey, I hope you got your little doghouse there all set up for some new furry little friends. Not really, no. Hey, it's your rug cleaning bill, pal. <laughs> all right, Bluff. I think at least I know how to make you disappear. Now. Let's see if we can make some animals disappear and make Penn and Teller and Ruby reappear. Well, we can't help you get rid of the animals, but we can save you a plane flight and get you back to Studio G. We'll just use a uh, little bit of magic right here, and you are going to disappear. You all set? Tell us with the magic wand, and here we go. Wow! Well, so they uh, can make an animal here. disappear. <sighs> So rough, she's gone, vanished, disappeared. The greatest magicians in Las Vegas, Nevada, have really done a real vanish. Let's see someone else in Vegas. Oh. You're that was just a camera trick. Okay, it was. It was just a, cam just a camera trick. Good thing, too. I wouldn't have liked trying to explain to Ruby's dad that his daughter disappeared. Hi, Dad. Hey, Ruby. I was just with Penn and Teller, yeah. and they taught me a magic trick, and I need to practice it. Ten foil ball. That's very good. Amazing. Hello? Hello, amazing Ruby. Hi, Hi Ruff. Ruby, I want you to take this to the next level. Which would be? Your dad's an easy audience. I need you to go out on the streets and entertain a real crowd. Dad, can you help her? Sure, I'd be happy to. All right, go! Do some magic. Hi, are you Angela? I am. It's Angela. She's an animal enrichment expert. We're supposed to find a mystery animal that uses a bucket for enrichment. Well, enrichment is actually being able to provide animals with opportunities to do natural behaviors. For example, I'm getting ready to do some tiger enrichment. Whoa, tiger enrichment. Tigers exhibit a lot of cool behaviors when they smell stuff. They might scratch things, they might rub on Yeah, I can item. tell that maybe they scratched that up. Yes, they particularly like really strong smelling things. It smells like cinnamon. This is really strong peppermint. Oh, that smells like bug spray. All right, now we have to put them on some of the things out in the exhibit. This is where the tigers come and spend their day. If you guys want to wait right here, I'll be back in a couple minutes. What? She's going in the tiger Perfect. exhibit? Good. Oh, oh, they're not in there at the moment. <laughs> All right, are you ready for us to release the tigers? Yeah. Yes, we are. Oh, there they are. Hi. Uh, they're so cute. They're just licking it. Yeah, she's scratching it up. Yep, so the tigers like the strong smells, and that makes them scratch and rub and do other tiger things. Bluff, if you're sending a tiger to my house, you, you are so toast. We were wondering if you could help us figure out which animal in this list uses a bucket for enrichment. The Siamang would be able to carry the bucket around and um, pull things out of the bucket, so my best guess would be the Siamang. Cool. cool. They They've done it. The mystery animal they're going to give a checkup to is a Siamang. A Siamang would eat primate biscuits and produce, would use a bucket for enrichment, and produces 20 gram poops. That's the one. You should call him out and tell him. Oh, hey, Fetchers, how's it going? We found this random. Yeah, we figured it out. It's, it's a Simang. Simang, that's, that's one of our apes. I'll uh, arrange for her to come to the hospital, and why don't you two meet Dr. Mark there? Cool. All right, cool. That sounds good. Okay. Oh, cool. We're going to work with Dr. Mark now. So let me introduce you first to Penny, our patient here who's asleep for her procedure. And this is Dr. Deidre. Hey, guys. How's it going? Welcome to our veterinary treatment room today. So as you guys know, this is Penny, our Siamang, and she's just getting a routine checkup today. Now, Dr. Debbie is actually doing an ultrasound of her abdomen right now so that we can look at her liver, her kidneys. Cool. So you guys want to listen to her heart? Yes. Yeah. Want to point these towards the front of your okay. face? 
Okay, so make sure you're hearing that beat. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a 10 second count and you need to count how many beats you hear during that 10 seconds. You ready? Go. Stop. How many did you get? 17. 17 times six equals 102. That's a good heart rate for her. So she's doing really, really well under anesthesia. Do you want to help us brush teeth today? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to open up that mouth. You're going to go all the way back into her molars and brush away. Okay, now let's get those top teeth. This is so awesome. It's hard to get in there. Yeah, it is. So Not as easy as brushing your own teeth, huh? No. Good job, guys. <laughs> wow, <laughs> they just brushed the teeth of an ape. Her hands look a lot like ours. Do I provide rare opportunities for my fetchers or what? Well, thanks very much for coming to join us today. Thank you, Dr. Mark. Have a good rest of your time here. Okay, thanks. Right. Thanks. We'll see you back in Studio G, Ralph. See you back in Studio G. Marco Bye. and Shreya, Bye. see you back Thank in you. Studio G. Oh, and Dr. Mark, thank you so much for all your help today. Now, I wonder where Ruby and her dad have gone. And now, live from Las Vegas, Nevada, Ruby! Step right up. See the amazing Ruby, the tinfoil magician. Yes, a tinfoil magician. Or actually a human magician who works with tinfoil. Want to see magic trick? <laughs> yeah. The Grant Brothers want to see a magic okay. trick. Ten, what would you give her? 6.2. A 9. A 9. A nine. Great. That was definitely an 11. It's a 12. A 19. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beyond 10. That is beyond good. You back in Studio G, Ruff. Hey, Ruby. It's time to leave uh, Las Vegas. Drive carefully. Come back soon. And here come our contestants. First, back from Florida, where they bravely followed tigers, courageously hey! fed crocodiles, and heroically measured poop, Shreya and Marco. And now, unless she disappeared again, the sleight of hander herself, Ruby. She has brought the set with her. <laughs> and look at that, I'm right on the front. Welcome back, Ruby. Well, Fetchers, I just came up with a good enrichment idea. Would you like to hear what it is? Yeah. Gee, Ralph, I'd love to. It's called Enriching Fetchers with Points. Yeah. Yes. We start with Marco and Shreya for figuring out which mystery animal was due for a checkup. It's a Simon. You're getting 30 points. Nice. Yeah. Now, I gotta say, a grand total of 30 points, we can do better than that. Luckily, you also made Penny, that Siamang, very happy, holding her hand and brushing her teeth. You know, if you brushed my teeth, I'd have given you 40 points. But for a Siamang, 55 points. Yeah! That gives you two a grand total of 85 points. Yeah! And now we come to the amazing Ruby. Ruby, you learned to perform a spectacular oh, magic good. trick. Oh, pretty good, pretty good. And then you did an amazing job Whoa. when you took it out on the street. Whoa. Whoa. 85 points. Yes, yes, Ruby. Ruby. But is that all the points a dog can give? Oh, no. no. What time is it? Bonus points. Today's five bonus points go to the fetcher who held her oh, own with two of the greatest magicians in the world. Just look at the camera while we're not around you. Just pretend we're not here and tell us what you think about meeting Penn and Teller. Okay. I mean, this is just personal. This is just you alone. Of course. This is not, this is not us. Ruby, with 90 points, you're today's daily winner. Yes. Now, Ruby, I have here two top hats, which could have bunnies in them. <laughs> Under one top hat, a prize you'll find more enriching than peppermint and bug spray. Under the other hat, something produced by the Key Largo wood rat. But I'm not telling you what. Uh -huh. So, what will it be? Top hat A or top hat B? A for animals. Abracadabra and animals. I like it. Normally, I would say your prize is in the mailbox, but not today. Chet has placed your prize somewhere near the car. Not there. 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 Wow. It's a pretty big one. Whoa. Bring it to the front. Whoa, what is Whoa. it? What is, what is this? Ah, it's your own magic kit. 
That's awesome. Wow. Wow. Now you too can fill a whole theater in Las Vegas. You know, after a little practice. It's a lock and a cup. Got all kinds of goodies. All right, Fetchers, boom, we've come to the end of another amazing show on Fetch with Ruff Ruff Ben. Hey! We'll see you, Fetchers. Great job today. Well, Blossom, it's nice to know nothing actually disappears. Wait, where's my plate of cheese? Chat. Hey, Ruffio, Bluff, we found this great place in Florida for your animals. Ah, oh, yeah, no, that problem went away. I sent them all back to the wild. Bing, boom. Okay. Anyway, for my heartless thanks, I'm giving you a great gift. My ship's finally come in. It's all yours. Got a few leaks, but it mops up real nice. I don't want that in my doghouse. Hasta la pasta. Whoa, wait. Chad, is that cheese in your mouth? Well, I guess it didn't disappear. Hey, you want to learn more about biology? Let's dig a little deeper. We have 27 male crocodiles. The average crocodile in Africa can probably get up to about 20 feet, and they are very ravenous when they go after the food. Can we try? Sure. You can get some of those guys way over there in the back. As long as it can fit it in its mouth, it'll swallow it whole. They look so hungry. Their like... jaws are green. And if you want to dig even deeper, go to pbskidsgo.org. Okay, one last thing. Not only do I host my own television show, but I have a fantastic website, too. Check it out. It's more fun than turning round and round in circles before a nap. PBSKidsGo.org. Hey,